Alright, in this video I'm going to show you all how to set up Scene Builder so that we can put together our 3D scenes a whole lot faster. Um, on the screen now I have um, the game I'm working on and I have Scene Builder set up to how I like to use it um, and it's populated with a whole bunch of stuff. So for example, if I want to put uh, a candle on this table, I can just do so. That's all there is to that. So let's go over into a new project, um, one that's completely empty. Um, and let's set up Scene Builder and let's also import a few assets to work with. Um, Kenny has a bunch of free assets to work with, so let's go ahead and use these. I'm not really sure what's in here to be honest. But this is set up for Godot, so we hopefully won't need to bother with materials. Create ourselves a scene. And uh, let's make a floor. So the way that Scene Builder works is that um, it ray casts from the, the camera to the mouse cursor and it needs to hit a collider. And if it doesn't hit a collider, then it's not going to know where to place the object. physics material, we don't want that. We want a collision shape. Let's set up a box. And we're also going to want to see it. So let's set up a mesh instance. And then we can scale this. And uh, Give it some kind of floor looking color. Alright, so there's our floor. Um, it doesn't want us to scale it, but that's fine. Um, so now we have our assets and um, we have a floor. So let's go ahead and import Scene Builder now. So um, if you want to contribute or help um, out with CBuilder, it is MIT licensed, so there's nothing to worry about there for you. And um, yeah, just come over here to issues, and you know this is where we talk. And today I am responding to this fellow here. Um, and of course you should read the documentation. Um, Especially this is, so this is going to be in change a whole lot. I'm still kind of moving things around. But the idea here is, you know, w w when we hold down the alt modifier, you know, we, we want the whole keyboard to do something. And uh, that's where it's going. But just to install it, we can go over here to releases. And of course, the best way to install Scene Builder would be to use GitHub and uh, you know clone it. That way, you can do just do a pull request for an update. But um, it's you know pretty simple to do it this way. So I figured I'll just drag and drop for the video. And we have to make sure it's enabled in plugins. And um, it should generate a data directory. Um, Let's reload the project and see if it shows up. Yep, 
Yeah, there it is. There's our data directory. Um, so the thing that we're looking for in here is our collections name resource. Um, and so this is how we control the our palette up here. Um, let's just do group one and group two, and then we can have them be red and blue. And uh, I just I just hope that this helps me keep track of where everything is when you have thousands of different assets. It, it becomes easy to lose them. So there are two palettes for us. Um, so let's populate in with our assets. Let's split these up. I, again, I don't really know what these are. Um, so let's just put half of them in group one and half of them in group two. So the most straightforward way to add these to group one would be go to projects, tools, scene builder, and create scene builder items. Um, you know, these are other commands for later. Um, I believe they're mostly in the documentation. You might have to read the script to actually see what these are doing. Um, but for now, we're just creating group one. Um, so the most common option I'd imagine we'll want here is a rotation. And that way, when we play something, it'll be randomly rotated around Y. And a lot of the times we'll want a slight variation in scale. Vertical, vertical offset is most useful when replacing decals on a flat surface. That way there will be a small um, offset to prevent Z fighting. Um, but typically B won't want this outside of that. Um, so this will open up Icon Studio, which is just a scene that has a camera to take a picture of the item. And if you want to have, um, and so reload all items and it'll show up. So if you want like a, a custom background or you want to, if you want these to look different somehow, this is, this is where you would mess with that. And so that's half of them in group one and we can put, um, and so the shortcut there is alt forward slash for, uh, to automatically bring that up. Um, so yeah, alt, alt forward slash here. And so let's not have any options for this second group. And uh, if you want to change those options later, um, so this is a, this is something to do with Godot is when the folder doesn't show up right away. Um, I, I don't exactly know. Uh, why it doesn't refresh right away. But we can reload to force it or force a refresh. Oh, did I? I think I accidentally uh, typed in group two instead of group one. But, okay, group two that time. So, it still didn't pop up though. And so yeah, there it is now. Um, so yeah, so let's go back to our scene. <clears throat> and so now we can just place items. Um, so a quick way to move through items would be shift and left and right arrow. And if you want to move between groups, you press alt and left and right arrow. And we only have two groups, so it just loops back around. Um, right, so, so our commands here. Um, so this brick doesn't have a, a collision shape on it, right? So we can't place an item on that brick. Um, but if our um, our brick pack scene had a, a collision shape on it, you know, then it would be fair game. But yeah, when you press the one key, um, you can see down bottom right we have uh, this little one, two, three, and four, which will turn green. So one is uh, rotate around X, two two is rotate around Y, three is rotate around Z, and a four is scale and five is to reset. And if you uh, have randomized uh, options 
in your um, scene builder groups, then you know it'll be randomized. Um, if you press T by default, T is use local space. Um, that will use local space for your rotations instead of uh, global space, world space. Um, yeah, use surface normal is useful sometimes if you're play placing like tapestry or carpets. Um, generally want negative Z for that. Um, fine world 3D, you generally won't need to press this button. Um, it should automatically... World 3D is... Um, is attached to your current active scene so as long as you have an active scene open it should find it but if for some reason you can't raycast then you can try to press this button it shouldn't hurt anything um, but yeah whenever you change your items you'll need to reload all your items and uh, if you have presets that you didn't like um, you can update them in here and um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, shift, shift one, two, three. You know, um, will be our offsets. Up, down, and then right click is to confirm or to, you know, let go of the transformation. And then five to reset, of course. Um. So yeah, what else should I show here? Um, one useful command um, is the swap command. So it, when, when you have a, a prefab in the scene and you have a prefab down, oh, that's not a prefab, that's a resource. And not a prefab, right? I, I used to use Unity, which is why I still call it that. But um, So let's say we want to replace this little guy with a, um, well, stairs. So I can press Alt-S and I'll get an error. All right. Well, I'll have to. I'll have to figure that out later. But it's supposed to swap. You know, all S is supposed to swap the character with the stairs. Um, yeah. Another another one would be Alt C, which would be to change places. Which also doesn't work. Well, it works in my project, which is. Not what you want to hear in a uh, tutorial video. Anyway, I'll figure those out later. Um, but those are the commands that are in here. And, um, you know, Alt. All right, well, this is a new project. Well, I'll, I'll debug that while I'm not recording. Um, but that's that's the basics of it. Um, I hope that helps.